Google Ads is often expensive, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make it a little less expensive. I'm also gonna show you how to reduce that hectic thing called cost per click, so it's not as much of a strain on your budget. If you don't know who I am, my name is Matt. I'm the owner and operator of Tradesman Digital Marketing, a company that specializes in lead generation for Google Ads. And I'm gonna walk you through all that stuff you need to know to make sure it's a little less expensive and you can get some better results. So to start off, what is cost per click, just so we're all aware of what we're actually gonna be focusing on today. And one of the biggest factors in Google Ads when it comes to determining what you're paying is cost per click. This is essentially what you pay every time someone clicks on an ad. If someone clicks on your ad and the average cost per click, let's say is $4, you can spend quite a bit of a difference in that $4 gap, depending on the auction house, the bid amount. There's a lot of stuff that comes into it, but let's just say it averages out to $4. How would we get that down? What would be the process of actually going about and making sure that cost per click is lower? And there's a pretty easy standard operating procedure we use, which is going through and looking at three things, landing pages, keywords, and ads. If you add all these up, that generally comes out to what Google calls a quality score, which determines whether or not Google likes your actual ads. I just did an entire video on quality score if you wanna check it out a little bit more in detail. But in today's video, I'm just gonna walk through essentially what the steps are to get that price down and make sure it's not as expensive. The very first thing we wanna do when improving cost per click and making sure we're getting it down as far as possible is improving quality score. Quality score is the biggest factor when determining cost per click by far. And essentially, if Google doesn't like your ad, it's going to charge you more. If Google likes your ad, it's going to give you a discount. This is seen in average cost per click. So say your average cost per click is $5 at a five out of 10 quality score, which is essentially average. Google is not, not gonna add a tax to it and it's not gonna give you a discount. If your quality score is one, Google hates your ad and it doesn't like your landing pages and it doesn't like your keywords. It's gonna charge you substantially more. That cost per click is going to skyrocket. If Google Ads likes your ads, landing page, and keywords, and thinks they're all relevant, it's going to give you a discount. So what we have to do is make sure all three line up and all three are good. This is pretty easy to do. What we can do is come over here to our Google Ads campaign. We can click on our ads because it's gonna be one of the first things we look at. And as you can see, we have three out of three ads in this ad group. This is the fiberglass ad group. What we wanna make sure is that our ads are getting a good click-through rate. So if we look over here and we see click-through rate and it's doing okay, let's say it's 3%. What we can do is come over to a website called WordStream. They have a great blog post on this. They're pretty much the industry standard when determining benchmarks for conversion rates, click-through rates, and all of the above. Uh, I'll leave the link down in the description below, but we can come over here and see average click-through rate per industry. What we're gonna be doing is looking at the search part of this. Uh, the display network is going to be completely different for click-through rates as you're clicking on a banner ad, which is essentially on the side of the page. And what we can see is there's a whole bunch of different industries. What you're gonna do is take your best guess at this and figure out what industry your business belongs to. So this could be education, B2B, consumer services. For this one, I would say we're gonna be either consumer services or some type of industrial services, depending on if we're selling commercial pools or not. I'd say probably consumer services. And then we can come across here and look at the actual consumer services section, which is in the orange. So if we're at 2.41%, and then we come back to our ad and say it was at 3%, that's good. If it's at 1.5%, maybe we have to change that up, especially if we have a decent amount of clicks. If your ad has about 100 clicks, that's a pretty good indicator of whether or not this is going to be consistent over time. Normally, if it's got 100 clicks in it, it's like, yep, this is gonna be the consistent conversion rate over time, and we can make a good decision on that. Anything less than that, uh, you're gonna start seeing a little bit of a variability in whether or not the decision is correct, but you know, it's up to you and how much you wanna spend on this. What I would do in that case and scenario, say we have an ad that's performing terribly and it's like 1.2%, the other ones are like two and 2.2. I would pause the loser by coming over here, hitting pause, and then doubling out the winning ad by checking this off, hitting edit, hitting copy, and then hitting paste. That would double out the ad and then I would go in and change the headlines. This way we can get a better click-through rate. The reason this is important is because one of the determining factors in quality score is expected click-through rate. What Google thinks people will essentially click on your ad at a certain rate. What is that rate at? And this is important because if people don't like your ad, Google is going to essentially deem that irrelevant to the customer and then dock you in quality score, which is not good. And that's not where we want to be. Once we start optimizing these ads and it seems that it's doing really, really well, we can come over to our keywords. As you can see here, search keywords in this specific ad group and make sure they are relevant. 
if you've set up your campaign structure correctly, like I've shown you in the search campaign tutorial that I've created, I'll link that up above, your ads and your keywords should already be relevant. If you're typing fiberglass pool installation and your ad says pool installation or fiberglass pool installation for that matter, you should have a high ad relevance. This should be pretty easy to do, not super difficult. And then that should lead to a landing page that says something about fiberglass pool installation and you're looking to install, get a quote now. Very easy stuff to do. The next thing I'd be looking at is the landing page experience, another massive factor in quality score, which essentially determines how much Google likes your landing page and how much do people like your landing page? Are they going to the landing page and just bouncing off of it and going to another one? If so, why? Is it just terrible? Is it not relevant to them? Google's going to figure this out by time spent on page and bounce rate and a whole bunch of other variables, but it's pretty good at figuring out if people like your landing page or they don't. One thing that is super important about landing pages is that they are kept simple, clear to the point, and do not overcomplicate anything. The more stuff we put on the page, the less likely people are to convert. The reason being is it's called cognitive load, which is essentially in your brain, there's a lot of stuff going on. If we add more and more and more stuff, people get stressed out and they go, I can just find an easier solution somewhere else. So they leave. That's not what we want to happen. We want nice, easy journey. So nice, easy headline, sub headline, and probably a clear call to action, like call now or a form submission. And then below you can provide social proof and features and benefits, stuff like that. But keep it super simple, grade eight language. You don't want to overcomplicate this stuff. Another thing you need to look at is landing page speed. If your page takes 28 seconds to load, people are going to leave. You are going to get a terrible landing page experience and Google is going to dock you on quality score and your cost per click is going to skyrocket, which is not somewhere we want to be. So one of the things you can do is come over to page speed insights, completely free online. I'll link it down below. As you can see on this site, we typed in, you just type in the URL of whatever site landing page you're using and you can check it out mobile and desktop. For this example, desktop's doing great. It's loading quickly, 0.5 seconds to load in, easy peasy. The mobile version, not great, 2.2 seconds. That needs to be improved and that would definitely go against your actual quality score and raising that cost per click. Google is going to tax you more. Now, when it comes to actually lowering your cost per click, one of the most effective things you can do is actually adding negatives because that will bring your actual average cost per click in the entire account down because you're not wasting money on bad search terms, which is something that is very easy to do. Most people don't take the time to do this, but very, very easy. And again, people are just not going to take the time to do this. So what you're gonna do is come over here to insights and reports hit search terms. You can look at this for an ad group, campaign level, whatever you wanna do. Uh, I find it's pretty easy just to do at a campaign level, specifically if the campaign isn't too big. Then what you're gonna do is scroll through here. Uh, we don't have any data in here, but you're gonna check on each and every keyword that you don't want to appear, and then you add it as a negative. This tells Google Ads, I don't want to bid on these keywords because they are wasting my money. That will save you a lot of money because you're not wasting it on all these terrible search terms. Again, takes time, but most people are not going to take the time to do this and they will suffer the consequences of a very high cost per click because they're just wasting all this money. Another thing we can add into our account to make sure our cost per click comes down even further and will help our ad appear bigger and get a better expected click through rate is by using extensions. And extensions can make your ad just absolutely gigantic and they're fantastic for getting more clicks on your actual site and bringing costs per clicks down, which is something I absolutely love about them. In order to do this, what you're gonna do is come over here to assets. You wanna make sure it's selected at the campaign level, not the actual ad group level because you can add them individually at the ad group level. It's a complete pain and waste of time for the most part. Make sure campaign level, as you can see, nothing selected here. Then you're gonna add in business name, logo, site link, and pretty much anything else that is going to be relevant to your campaign. Normally, I don't like adding location extensions for most businesses. The reason being is they're very hard to track whether or not they convert into a sale. Sometimes they are useful, especially if people are coming to your business, like say it's a bar or a restaurant, but say you're selling pool insulation, no one ever comes to your business, probably something you don't want to add and it's just going to be a waste of a cost per click essentially. Also other ones I would consider not using price app and promotion. If people are super price sensitive, generally not the customers you want. You want the higher end people who are going to be willing to spend more money provided you deliver a better product. Uh, app, generally not gonna be super useful to most companies because you don't have an application to send people to. And also if you are sending them to an application, why? Um, I've seen companies in the past that are spending 10,000 plus dollars a month have an app extension. It boggles my mind. We immediately go in and turn it off. The next one is promotion, which is sometimes good, sometimes not. Sometimes it's great at getting people in the door, especially if you can remarket and sell to them later on for an extended uh, lifetime value of the customer. But if it's a one-time product, we don't wanna be seen as the lowest 
offer on the market. Generally that hurts brand. Generally that's not great for most people and what brings in customers that we don't really want. So I am very hesitant with promotion as well. But by adding all of these extensions, which are very easy to add, structured snippet, site links, your ad can be absolutely mass massive. And the bigger it is, the more likely it is to be seen, the more likely it is to be seen, the higher the expected click-through rate, probably the higher the quality score, the lower the cost per click, the more clicks, the more conversions, the more conversions, the more sales, and you have more account success overall. So I know that sounds complicated, but these little things do make a difference. The next thing I'd be looking at is location settings. And essentially we will want to give Google ads as much search volume as possible. If we give it more search volume, it has more opportunities to find a lower cost per click because it's just a bigger area. When you restrict search volume, chances are the cost per click is going to go up. The reason for this is just there's a limited amount of volume that you can actually bid on and it's going to be more competitive. So if we can make it a little less competitive by expanding the area, we're going to have a lot more account success normally. Uh, what we're going to do is actually select a campaign. So let's go with this one. And then we're going to come over here to locations, which is under ad or audiences, keywords and content. And what this is going to do is pop up essentially everywhere we're targeting. For this one, we're targeting Ontario. But for example, let's say we weren't targeting Ontario, we were only targeting maybe Hamilton, Ontario, or a, a specific city, that might not be enough search volume. And what we can do is simply come in here, add a, you know, a province, a state, a couple cities nearby, maybe even a extended radius. So you can actually come in here and just increase the radius. So let's say we're targeting, you know what, let's do Hamilton, uh, Ontario, and then we will come over here. And instead of the 20 mile radius, let's do a, you know, 50 mile radius, because now we can expand. Of course, you want to be able to service these customers, you don't want them to be, you know, 500 miles from you, and it's not able to actually be able to service them for whatever service you offer. But by expanding the actual area here, you're going to have a lot more opportunity to bid on different keywords, there's going to be more search volume, and there's going to be a better probability of that cost per lead going down. So that's something I would do if we were struggling with a high cost per click, or you could just add the entire state like I'm doing here. And as you can see, this is good to go. Another one is looking at ad schedule. Maybe you're only running on Mondays to Fridays. It might be worth testing out running Saturdays and Sundays as well to see where that cost per click is. And maybe a Saturday converts really well for you and it's a really low cost per click and it might be something to look into. Generally, the more you give Google ads, the lower the cost per click is going to be. Another thing we can do is come over here to our campaigns and add something called the Google search network. So for this is essentially, we're going to be able to advertise on all of Google's partner networks. One of the benefits of this is a lot more search volume, which brings cost per click down. One of the bad things about this is they're not as monitored. So the quality of the conversion needs to be monitored very carefully. In order to turn that on, all we have to do is come over here to networks, check this on and then hit save. It was already on in this account. And uh, yeah, it's very easy to add. Make sure you come over here exit out of there and now it's turned on very, very easy to do. Another thing we could be looking at is actually going into our bid strategies and adjusting them. It's pretty easy to adjust cost per click when you're using maximize clicks. Uh, all you have to do is set a limit. So for a bid strategy that we normally start an account off in, let's say this is set to, we'll change the bid strategy here, we'll do clicks. And we would just come over here, set maximum cost per click bid limit, let's say it's $10. The issue with this is it focuses on clicks doesn't focus on conversions, most people want conversions. So in order to set that correctly, you just hit save and you're good to go. For this example, most people will be in target CPA. And what you would do is slowly lower this down month over month, you don't want to just drop this by 40%. Normally 15% is completely fine. So say it was at 100, you could drop it down to probably let's say $90, I'd be fine with it's about a 10% drop. And then you would just hit save and you're good to go. Slowly month over month, you can drop this down, you kind of want to see where Google's at with it, you want to give it time to figure out, okay, we can bid lower and lower and lower month after month, it's not as pressing. And if you do everything all at once, Google's AI essentially has to relearn everything, your cost per click skyrockets, because it's got to test everything again to figure out where to put the money. Uh, that's not somewhere you want to be and it generally burns a lot of money if you do that. So slowly month over month, you lower it down. Normally, you want to give it at least two weeks to figure this stuff out. And then you can continue to lower it month over month. One of the things with this is you need a decent amount of search volume. If you're struggling already with search volume, and you lower it continuously, you might run out of search volume because Google says, Hey, there's just no clicks available for those specific prices. So that's another thing you need to look at. Now, once you've done all of this, your cost per click should be pretty low and Google ads shouldn't be as expensive. What you should continue doing with your account is continue optimizing it, making sure you're adjusting everything, making sure you're A-B testing ads, adding good keywords, making sure you're building out new ad groups as you see fit. 
One of the tools I like to use is the Google Ads Optimization Checklist. It's completely free and the link for this is down below. It walks you through on what to do on a weekly, monthly, and three month basis. And it also allows you to jot down your results so you can see you're making progress month over month. Now, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding Google Ads or reducing cost per click, leave a comment down below. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day. Take care and I wish you all well.